So one of the most feared, if not the most feared, complication of uh, patients that have Parkinson's disease and Parkinsonism is indeed the presence of what we call dyskinesias. Those are abnormal movements that uh, are present in about 30% of individuals that are affected by Parkinson's disease. And despite most of the time can be controlled with medications, with adjustment of medications, mm, they are really feared for the patients because of the embarrassment, the social um, problem that they can bring to the patient, given the fact that these movements are not controllable, they cannot stop them, and they are associated to an increased dose of the medication, in this case, carbidopa slash levodopa. We know for sure the more medication people are taking for longer time, the most likely is that they will develop dyskinesia throughout their course of disease. So the highest is the dose, the longest is the disease, the, the more likely is that this is going to be a problem. And this is absolutely vital for Parkinson's disease. However, there is a group of condition that is similar to Parkinson's disease, they share the same characteristic, share the same pathology maybe, but they're not exactly Parkinson's disease, that we have no very much, inf very many information about on how frequent, how common are these kinesias. And this condition I'm referring to are the other form of what we call synucleinopathy. So dementia of Lewy bodies, Parkinson's disease dementia, multiple system atrophy. Conditions are very similar to Parkinson's disease. They share some of the same features, but there's much more. There's memory, complain, there can be hallucinations, there can be problems with uh, um, behaviors, there can be major dysautonomia, so in other words people may have problems standing up, dropping down. So we run a study, we did a study using the powerful tool that we have of the Rochester Epidemiology Project, a population-based record, record linkage system that allows us to study individuals that are part of the um, part of the project from the moment they were born to more or less the moment they were, die they were dead, so the entire lifespan of an individual. And we look specifically in this study at the not Parkinson's disease, but the other form of Parkinsonism that are related to Parkinson's disease, so dementia of bodies, Parkinson's disease dementia, and multiple system atrophy. Then we compare, obviously, the data that we had already published on Parkinson's disease with the current data that we had now. What we found was somehow interesting. We found that if in Parkinson's disease the presence of dyskinesia is about 30% of people, in the other Parkinsonism that I would call it again DLB, PDD and MSA is about 12. So they are absolutely less likely to develop this condition. And the vast majority seem to be responding very easily to an adjustment of the treatment. Not only, but also we were noticing that uh, there's a little bit of different effect between Parkinson's disease. We know that if you're younger, uh, you have more cinemat, more carbidopa, levodopa, you will have more dyskinesia in Parkinson's disease. People that had um, dyskinesia in these other conditions, dementia of bodies, Parkinson's disease, dementia and MSA, were a little bit older than what we were expecting. And this is was surprising to a certain degree, but to a certain degree not really, because it has to do with a concept called autopallidotomy. So pa globus pallidus is a nucleus that is present in all human brains and is part of the big complex called basal ganglia. The basal ganglia are responsible for our ability to move, our planning to move, and are the main, classically, the main nuclei that are involved in Parkinson's disease. What we, what we think, in the past, when people were doing surgical pallidotomy, so they were removing this nucleus, people that had dyskinesia didn't have dyskinesia. So they were improving that surgically. We think that there is this concept of autopallidotomy. The, what I mean is that the burden of the disease, the burden of the, gener of the dead, dead, dead generation, is not focal, it's more diffuse, involving the entire basal ganglia, involving, involving the entire pallidus. Therefore, people are basically with par this condition, Parkinson's disease, Parkinson's dementia, dementia of bodies, and MSA, 
are having an autopalidotomy, they are having a, depos a deposit of the, of the proteins inside the pallidus, basically doing a, an autosurgery of their own brain. Therefore, they are less likely to have dyskinesia compared to Parkinson's disease. The implications are very important because also prognostically, this is telling us if an individual that has Parkinsonism, we don't know exactly what, start to develop dyskinesia almost right away, is more likely to, uh, to have uh, Parkinson's disease than to have an atypical form of Parkinsonism. One question that may be, many people may ask is that, oh, what about dosing? You mentioned that, you know, likely people with Parkinson's disease that use more carbidopa, levodopa for longer. Well, actually, in our study, we adjusted for that. We also adjusted for duration of disease. So there was no adjusting for that limit, sorry, prevented the fact that we were comparing two different things. We adjusted, so we removed the confounder of duration and dosing. So using the same amount of dose, using the same amount of duration, there's a huge difference that help in the diagnosis, help in the prognosis, and help us also understanding the condition.